So in this question, we're given a function g of x, which is a piecewise function, which has two different parts depending on what the value of x is. So for x less than or equal to 2, we have that g of x is going to be equal to x minus 2 squared plus 1. And then for x greater than 2, we're going to have 4x minus 7. And we can see the graph of it is shown here with a straight line for the 4x minus 7 part and then a curve for our x minus 2 squared plus 1 part. So in part A of this question, we're being asked to find the value of g of g of 0. And this means that we need to take our function g of x and work out our first g of 0 and then work out what g of g of 0 is. So this is called composition of functions. So we first want to note that when we have g of 0, we know that x is equal to 0, which is less than or equal to 2, which means that g of x, for this case, is going to be equal to x minus 2 squared plus 1. So then what we can do is then say that for g of 0, this is going to be equal to, we substitute in 0 for x, so it's going to be 0 minus 2, and we put brackets around that and square and add 1, and then this comes out as 0 minus 2 is minus 2, squaring that we get 4, and then we add 1, which is 5, so we have that g of 0 is equal to 5. So then for the next part of this question, what we need to do is do our next composition of something. So we have then that g of 0 is 5, so in effect, we're now going to be working out what g of 5 is. So we have that x is equal to 5, which is greater than 2, which means that g of x is going to be equal to 4x minus 7. So then writing this, we'll have that g of g of 0 is going to be equal to 4 lots of g of 0 minus 7, which is going to be equal to 4 lots of what we worked out g of 0 as, which is 5. So we'll have 4 lots of 5, then we'll take away 7, and we know that 4 lots of 5 is 20. We subtract 7, which leaves us with our final answer of g of g of 0 is equal to 20 minus 7, which is 13. So now for part B of this question, we're asked to find all the values of x for which g of x is greater than 28. So we we'll recall here that we'll have that g of x is our piecewise function, which will be x minus 2 squared plus 1 for x less than or equal to 2, and that will be 4x minus 7 for x greater than 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this, but solve it as an equality, and then we're going to take a look and see how that relates to our inequality. So recall that an equality is when we have an equal signs, and an inequality is when we have a greater than or a less than. So we're going to take both parts of the function bit by bit and solve what they would be for when they're equal to 28. So we first have that 4x minus 7 is going to be equal to 28 and that is going to be equal to 4x and then we'll add 7 to both sides so then 28 adds 7 is 35 and then dividing both sides by x we have the x is equal to 35 divided by 4 and then likewise for the other part of our function so for the x less than or equal to 2 part we're going to have x minus 2, let me square that, add 1 is equal to 28. So then multiplying these brackets out, we'll have x squared minus 4x, and then we'll add on 4 from doing negative 2 times negative 2, and adding 1 to that, we'll have plus 5 is equal to 28. And then we can subtract 28 from both sides, which leaves us with x squared minus 4x 
minus 23 and that shall be equal to 0 and then we can solve this using the quadratic formula and we'll do this up here in this corner of the screen so we have that minus b so where a b and c are 1 minus 4 and minus 23 respectively so we're going to have 4 plus or minus then we'll have b squared minus 4ac inside a square root so we'll have negative 4 squared then we subtract 4 the lots of 1 multiplied by negative 23 then we add our square root in here and then we divide all of that by 2 of a which is 2 times 1 which is 2 so therefore putting this into our calculator we have that x is going to be equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 108 divided by 2 and then we put into our calculator the square root of 108 and we get that this is equal to 6 root 3 then we have a 4 and a 6 which have been divided by 2 which simplifying out gives us 2 plus or minus 3 root 3 so we've now got our we've now solved for our critical values and we now need to look and see how this relates to the inequalities. So we first take a note that g of 35 over 4 is going to be equal to 28. And then if we make something, if we then take our 35 over 4 and just make it a little bit larger. So let's have g of 35 over 4 plus 0 0.1 and then we'll be able to tell where the inequality holds and how it works so that is going to be equal to putting this into a calculator recalling that 35 over 4 plus 0 0.1 is greater than 2 so we have four lots of this and then subtract 7 and putting that into our calculator we get that is 28.4 which is greater than 28 so therefore, we can say that for x greater than 35 over 4, that is a value for x of which g of x is greater than 28. So therefore, we know that for any x greater than this, this inequality here, g of x greater than 28, will hold. So we then have g of 2 plus 3 root 3 and we know that 2 plus 3 root 3 is going to be greater than 2 so we'll have that so we know that 2 plus 3 root 3 is greater than 2 so we'll have that g of x is going to be 4x minus 7 and then substituting this into our equation 4 lots of 2 plus 3 root 3 minus 7 we get that that is 21 seven eight which is not equal to 28 which tells us that x equals 2 plus 3 root 3 is not a solution or a critical value so that means we need to do no further work to to find that on the inequality so then our next step will be to take a look at g of 2 minus 3 root 3 and we know that 2 minus 3 root 3 is going to be less than or equal to 2. So we'll have that g of x is going to be equal to x minus 2 squared plus 1. So then, just to double check this, if we take this and subtract 2 and square it, and then we add 1 on our calculator, we get that that is going to be equal to 28. So then, if we change this slightly and make it slightly more negative so if we take 0 0.1 off of x we'll then have g of 2 minus 0 0.1 minus 3 root 3 and putting this into our calculator we have that that is equal to 29.05 and we can 
Therefore, see that that is greater than 28. So therefore, we know that g of x is going to be greater than 28 for all of x, which is less than 2 minus 3 root 3. So therefore, writing a concluding statement, we have that g of x is going to be greater than 28 for x less than 2 minus 3 root 3 and for x greater than 35 over 4. So in part C of this question, we're now given a function h, which is going to look familiar. It comes from part of our piecewise function from the previous part of the question with the function g of x. So we have now that h of x is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 1 for x less than or equal to 2. And we're to explain why h has an inverse, but g does not. So we're first just going to note down that h is 1 to 1. And that means it has an inverse. And how do we know this? So we know that h is going to be everything on the left side of the graph from the point where x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 here. So we know that h of x is going to be this part of the graph here. So I'll just label that on the graph h of x. And we know that a function is going to be 1 to 1 if by using the horizontal line test. So if I draw this horizontal line here, we can see that for h of x, so this yellow highlighted black line, that this purple line here is only ever going to cross this function h of x once. So therefore, we know it's 1 to 1 and it has an inverse. So writing that down, we say that h is 1 to 1, so it has an inverse by horizontal line test. And I'm putting in brackets there, the line A only cuts h of x once, hence it's 1 to 1. And then we can say, on the other hand, that g is many to 1. And this means it does not have an inverse. And how do we know this? Well, we know that g of x is going to be this whole curve here. And we see that it is intercepted by this line, which we've labeled a. It's intercepted not only here, but here as well. So therefore, writing that down, we have that it's not going to have an inverse and it's made to 1 since the line A intercepts the curve G of X at more than one point. So therefore, we've answered the question and explained why h is an inverse, but g does not. So for part d of this question, we're asked to solve the equation the inverse of h of x is equal to negative a half. So let's recall that we have that h of x is equal to x minus 2 squared. And we add 1 to that, and that is for x less than or equal to 2. So we know that if we have the inverse of functions, if we have, let's just say, for example, we have a function f, and its inverse, the inverse of f of x, is equal to a, then we know that x, since it's the inverse, is going to be equal to g of a. So therefore, in our case, we have that h, the inverse of h, of x is equal to negative a half. So therefore, using this rule that we've just written down here in purple, we'll have that x is going to be equal to h of negative of a half. And we know what h is, because we've just, you know, we've been given that, we've written it down here. So this means that we can say that x is going to be equal to subbing in negative a half into our equation for h of x. 
we'll have negative a half, then we subtract 2 and we square that, we add 1, and then putting this into our calculator, we have that this is 29 over 4, so therefore in decimal form, we have that x is going to be equal to 7.25, and we have solved this equation and given a value for x. So now we're going to take a look back and see where we picked our marks up in this question. So part A of the question, where we had to find the value of g of g of x, so using composition of functions, it was worth two marks. We received our first mark for doing the initial function, so working out that g of 0 was equal to 5, and we then received our second mark for following this through and taking this value and substituting it into the next part, and our second mark is awarded for concluding that g of g of 0 is equal to 13. We then have that part B of the question was worth four marks. We received our first mark for knowing to work out the critical values. And we get our first mark for doing either 4x minus 7 is equal to 28 or x minus 2 squared plus 1 is equal to 28. That's two options to get our first mark. And we then receive our second mark for successfully working out the solution of 1x. So here I would pick up my second mark either here or either here also. I then received my third mark for working out the second x value correctly. So if I receive my second mark here, I will then receive my third mark here. And then I receive my fourth and final mark for this working here for coming to the conclusions about what the inequality is going to be. So here and here is where I pick up my fourth and final mark. Then moving to part C of the question, there was only one mark on offer and you received that one mark for just this, this statement here. So stating that H is one to one and stating that G is many to one. So then looking at question D, there was three marks on offer. We received our first mark for knowing that we can work out X by substituting negative one half into H so I received my first mark here. I received my second mark for substituting this value in to this equation for h. And then I received my third and final mark for the correct conclusion that x is equal to 7.25.